What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be heading down to San Diego to Resto Mods so that for them to check out the Camaro. Let's get into this video. I've been doing some nice upgrades to the Camaro. Everything's looking beautiful. It's gonna be my first drive, kind of far, I guess you would say, since I've done the mods and the brakes and everything like that. So it's good to kind of break in the, the brakes and you know, kind of get to drive it. So we're gonna get head down there and uh, check out the guys down there at Resto Mod. Alright guys, so we're making our way down to Restomots. We should be there shortly, but it's such a cool feeling to to get to drive the car down there and um, just to get in, put some miles on the car and, and drive so good. So I think we're pulling up here to Restomots and uh, say what's up to you guys and uh, see how it goes. What's up guys? I'm here with Sol from SOS Customs and he has brought in today his 1969 Chevy Camaro fully custom, fully restored and modified. We're gonna show you some of the details on this incredible car. Check it out. Tell me a little bit about the story that you told us uh, just earlier about uh, how this car was like kind of originally like a customer build, but it became something else. So originally like a customer came in to us and was like, hey, you know, uh, I want you guys to build me my 69, my dream car, 69 uh, Camaro. He's all, it needs a little body work. And the paint had little cracks here and there. Um, he brought it in. We ended up switching quarters, fenders, uh, a lot of patchwork because the car came from back east so that he wasn't aware of so by the time he was done you know he spent probably close to maybe 20 25 grand in in the paint and body alone so we knew what we put into this car and um it was cool we were talking about the color and he's like hey, i want something more like kind of resto mod look you know that's kind of like black i want to get rid of the chrome and so we had a bunch of like paint ideas that we went through and we ended up picking you know this color and so we did the pain, we did everything we needed to do. He took it and he had it for, you know, three years. So he enjoyed it, took it to car shows, good guys, you know, won some awards and had fun with it. One day he, he calls me out of the blue and says, hey, so um, I know you sell cars. Um, you know, you think you'd polish this up and put it up for sale. And I go, what car are you trying to sell? He goes, uh, the Camaro. I go, you're trying to sell the Camaro? Like, what are you <laughs> talking about? Dude, I thought that was your dream car. I was like, say no more. I'm buying it, <laughs> you know, because I knew what went into it. So, so the details on this car are very meticulous. Let's start with the paint and tell me a little bit about um, what the color choice was for that. So um, the color choice that when we originally talked to the customer, he was kind of torn between kind of three colors that we laid out like on, on spray cards. So one, one, one was like the Nardo gray, uh, one was the Sonic metallic gray, and one was like a, a solid, uh, like cement gray. So the Nardo gray is more of a more charcoal color, a little bit darker. And then the, the cement gray is more lighter. And then the Sonic gray kind of had that in between. So it had that kind of pastel solid color, but I don't know if it, the camera could capture it. This has a pearl. So it, this original color is from, and kind of modified, you know, we switched a little bit more pearls or whatever, is from a, a Sonic um, a Sonic Gray from Honda. Yeah, it's like, it has a very mean look, but it also has this kind of low key, like almost kind of undercover appearance because it's what it's really hiding under the hood is something quite powerful. So let's take a look under the hood and see what we're working with there. Let's open it up. And the idea too of me putting these arrow catch um, 
latches on here was partly due to something that's under here, which is that puppy right there, LS3. And what's going on here is that uh, we have the pipe that goes through here, which is the intercooler. So normally on a Camaro, you have your latch that goes right in the middle here to latch the hood, but that's not possible because we have a big old front mount intercooler. So the other way we had to do it is put some latches on there and that'll secure the hood. So, so tell me about this LS3 and the twin turbos on it. It's gone through some changes over time, right? Yes. Uh, tell me about all the extensive modif modifications that have been done here. So originally, obviously these cars come with like a 350 or even a big block, but you know, now with, with everything being so modernized and kind of enjoying the classic look with like a modern motor that is turnkey, you get in there and start it right up is everybody goes LS. That's the new new wave of the future. Like back in the days was, oh, upgrading a 350 and this, and but now this is like the new wave of, you know, doing all the, the classic cars. What I did before, and I don't know if you guys uh, saw it before, was it didn't have no engine cover. So it had like the stock LS look, you know what I mean? On the manifold. So like the manifold looked like the stock regular LS manifold and it didn't have none of these covers. And so for me, like to kind of give it that next step or that resto mod look was to be a, you know, clean up the engine bay, the cover, make a custom, you know, cover nice, all covered up. Obviously the brake, you know, wheel wood. Well, there's always a big debate about uh, when you have an LS3, do you supercharge it or do you turbocharge it? And what kind of made you decide on, on turbocharging versus supercharging? So supercharger, I think it would have probably been um, maybe a lot uh, cleaner in a sense, piping wise, because as you know, with turbos, there's piping everywhere, right? With super, the, the benefits of supercharging, you know, it would be obviously you have instant boost right away as the pulley crank, you know, turns it, you get boost at, at that level, but I feel like you're limited. Tell me about, um, you know, how, what kind of suspension you guys are running uh, and kind of why it's important to have like really good suspension and braking with a car with this much power. So originally on these cars, um, you know, the suspension obviously was not that great to begin with, right? A stock Camaro, what it had, you know, a spring with the shock in the middle and the back was leaf spring. Yeah. So this had originally car was like a leaf spring suspension, not even a four link, nothing like that. So from going to tubular arms, fully adjustable coilovers, you know, different spindles. So you have all the newer suspension, power steering um, in the front and then in the back going full four link suspension, um, it's a day and night difference. I mean, you're turning the whole car to a more modern uh, car. You know, it rides a lot better. Like, you know, me driving down the road, it just, you know, it feels like I'm driving a newer car. Like, you know, if you hit a bump, it's, you're not like swaying all over the place or like you feel like it, you know, kind of dips or anything like that. It's like solidly planted. And, and then from there, obviously you want to be able to stop it. So we went with the, you know, big brake kit all the way around. We went six piston front brakes, four piston rear, and I mean, that day and night difference, like oh, stop yeah. it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Having that much power, you know, obviously you want to be able to stop, you right. know, cause it's scary <laughs> when you're going that fast and you're like, oh, is it going to stop, you know, yeah. so. Right, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing to have 700 horsepower. It's another thing to make all that power manageable uh, in an old car. And so putting modern suspension, modern braking on it is definitely crucial. And then how about the wheels? So originally um, the wheels came uh, with this car. And they are like a custom, uh, like a billet wheel. Mm -hmm. um, and so originally these were um, polished. So it had, I believe that the center state, it's like almost like a graphite, kind of like a gunmetal look. And the, the lip was polished. So originally when we obviously got the car, we wanted to get rid of all the polished stuff, like chrome and everything like that. So we went ahead and sanded it, prepped it, primed it and painted, um, the wheels in gloss black and left the, the charcoal uh, kind of gunmetal center to kind of get rid of all the polished look that, you know, that we were trying to kind of match the whole car with. Uh, let's kind of walk through the interior a little bit and tell me about uh, what you guys chose for this interior setup. So uh, the interior that we went, obviously the original bucket seats that are, that are on there, the, the car, obviously you would probably just slide right off it because there's really no, it's not really of a bucket seat. So, um, we tried different, uh, originally it was kind of like a TMI kit that we were going to put in here. Uh, but then we went ahead and, and kind of customized it where 
we obviously did a more resto mod kind of look instead of a regular door panel it's all been like fiberglass molded kind of makes it more 3d did a, a full console in the center the back seats are more bucket look like the foam has changed and we did all the upholstery in like a leather with suede combination which is what the door panels have it's a black with white kind of stitching but the front seats uh, that catch you right away if you know it's out of a like 2005 bmw m3 oh. so so they have the the m sport kind of in, in the headrest there and they have the built-in um seat belts uh they're fully adjustable up and down so they're all power seats and obviously it's more of a bucket race seat so it definitely will hold you you know a lot better when you're you're going 100 plus or <laughs> going around corners let's walk around to the driver's side and uh, kind of take a look on that side of it i noticed you got a, a momo steering wheel over there so the transmission that we went with i kind of paired it up with a t56 so it's the same six speed out of like say you know a, a newer modern camaro okay so um, out of like a 2014 you know camaro six speed um we went with the mcleod um twin disc clutch set so um it has a better obviously a better engagement so it shifts it has a hearse uh, shifter on it so you know you're able to adjust the pedal which is cool with the clutch like you know you can adjust the pedal height or wherever you want it to be nice. you know and and, and it just it, it's a lot funner to drive especially if, obviously if you're having an automatic to a manual car you know you can actually enjoy the car driving it being a manual car you know and the wheel that we went like you saw the momo steering wheel was um i was trying to find something that can kind of bring the modern you know that resto look but kind of match the interior but because we kind of have suede and leather that has a little bit of suede um, on the steering wheel and just kind of and it's obviously a lot smaller not compared to a big old camaro wheel that you know it's like 18 inches you're trying to turn it like a truck so you have more modern feel obviously the power steering is upgrade so it's it's a lot more responsive you're able to you know kind of um obviously enjoy it more while you're driving. That's really awesome. And then the uh, the gauge setup, what do you have for the gauges here? I was gonna do something more like a digital Dakota or uh, kind of like that modern look, but I still wanted to keep like the actual, like the needles so that it looks not all digital, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the way we set up with this was more of a autometer setup. So autometer has like a kind of like a capsule that kind of goes in the original location but it has all your gauges you want. So you have your, your tack, your speedometer, oil pressure, uh, voltage, boost, vacuum for boost, yeah. right? We need that. <laughs> and, um, and it just has all the, and that's what you need, especially for like, obviously you have a modern car to be able to uh, check all your parameters, make sure, you know, oil pressure, everything's charged, everything's good. Obviously, so you know where the car is in case there's something wrong, you know, you're able to kind of monitor all, your, all the things on the motor. And then you got your graphic on, on the windshield here just to let, let everyone know that it, it's an SOS custom. All right, guys, that was a great time with the guys over there at Resto Mods. I really appreciate them having me and the car, and it was such a great experience. And um, so, yeah, I drove back here, uh, back to the shop, so uh, get ready to go home. I want you guys to comment uh, below and tell me what you guys think of the video. And uh, if you guys have your own Resto Mod at home, um, what you guys want to do to it or you know from small repairs to full you know restoration let me know if you guys have any questions on that you know I handle here at the shop a lot of the you know we even do insurance claim for classic cars so you know we do insurance claims for new cars as well which uh, you know I handle a lot of that and ordering parts and getting everything you know done for the for the cars here at the shop so uh, especially with classic cars a lot of people don't have a place where they can take their car and, and get it repaired in case they get into an accident um, and us being that we do restorations on, on cars like this, um, if you have a beautiful car that's restored and, and it gets an accident, you want to get it back to its original location or its original state, you know, that's something where we can come in and we work with all insurances. So, um, yeah, comment on the link below. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, make sure you hit the notification button and that subscribe button to make sure you guys get all the new updated content that we have. Uh, thanks again to Resto Mods uh, for having us there. Um, here at SOS Customs, we got you covered. Peace. You're still there? Peace.